Hey everyone, welcome back to Teacher FYI. If you're new here, I'm Mackenzie, a fifth grade teacher in Northern California. We just hit a huge subscriber milestone that I am super proud of. Thank you so much for watching these videos, for going above and beyond for your students this year, and being amazing teachers. If you are not yet subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing to join our wonderful community. I do upload new teaching tips every week, and if you do enjoy this content, please remember to give this video a thumbs up so it can reach even more teachers. So you know how much I love Jamboard and I love classroom games, so I thought today I would put those together and I am sharing seven math games that you can play on Jamboard with your students to mix things up and keep them more engaged in that online classroom. Given that this is a special video, I do have an extra little surprise that will hopefully make your life a little bit easier that I'll mention later on in this video. So put your game faces on and let's get into it. This first game is Make 10. So this is for all of you primary teachers out there. As we know, making 10s is a super important concept for our littles as they are building their number sense. This is a game of memory where students need to uncover pairs of sticky notes to find two numbers that will add together to make 10. So for this activity on Jamboard, I just use those sticky notes to create numbers zero through 10, and then I'm going to mix them up so they're all in a different order. Now I'm going to place a blank sticky note to cover each number so they're all hidden. Now students are going to take turns to uncover two sticky notes at a time. If they add up to 10, then they have a match and they put it in their pile. Students then keep playing until there are no more numbers left on the board. Now I know Jamboard can be a little trickier for our little ones to navigate, so you could definitely play this as a whole class, and then with enough practice, they could play with partners in breakout rooms, or even independently, since it's more like a game of memory where they could just practice making those tens by themselves. I love this game because it is super easy to create on Jamboard. It gives our students a lot of practice building those tens, and they could honestly play this one forever. This next game is super popular and super fun, and and that is tic-tac-toe 15. So instead of using X's and O's, you're going to be using the numbers one through nine. So I use the sticky notes to make the numbers one through nine, and then I use the drawing tool. I just hold down shift to make straight lines, create the tic-tac-toe board. So now that the board is all ready, students are going to take turns to drag and drop one number at a time. So each number can be played only one time, and the winner is the first player who gets three numbers to go horizontally, vertically, or diagonally that add up to 15. Now there is one rule that you're going to need to go over with your students, and that is they cannot put a five in the middle of the tic-tac-toe board on the very first turn. This would bring up really great conversation with your students about why they can't put a five in the middle. And if you think about it, if you are really good at the game make 10 that we just went over, then you'll know that by placing that five in the middle would mean that all of the other numbers are going to make combinations of 10. So by placing that five in the middle, then they'll automatically win every round. So this brings up really good conversation you can have with your students, or you could play a little joke on your students and keep winning every round against them by playing that five in the middle to see if they catch on, because I think we could all use a little more laughter these days. This third game is multiple application memory. Now I have taught second, third, and fifth grade. I know how much our students need to know those math facts and how much practice it can take. And so this is a really fun game. It's engaging for our students and they can play with partners in their breakout rooms. So this works just like the game of memory. I use the sticky notes to make all the different math facts that I want my students to practice. So in this example, they're practicing their threes. And so students need to find matching pairs with the equation and the product. Once they have found a pair, they drag it to their pile, and whoever has found the most pairs at the end of the game wins. Now, you know your students best, so you can definitely adapt this to whatever math facts your students are working on, and you can adjust the level of difficulty depending on how many sticky notes are on that board. So I recommend using a four x four grid to start out so there's not an overwhelming amount of sticky notes. The more sticky notes on the board, the more challenging it will be, but I know we all have those students who are up for that challenge. They could honestly play this one forever. When I put my students out in those breakout rooms, they have to be so engaged since it is a game of memory, and they are practicing those math facts which makes me one happy teacher. Game number four is Connect Four. Multiplication edition. 
This is another super simple game that is good all year long for your students to practice those math facts. So for this game, I made a template on Google Slides and inserted numbers that way. Then I'm going to insert that template as a background so that it's locked in place onto the Jamboard. So I made these little game pieces just using the shape tool. So I just made a little stack of them in different colors for each partner. And now to play this game, I have my students open up the Google Dice. So Google has this really awesome tool where you can choose which dice you want. Now depending on what numbers you chose for your board, you might want to choose to use a different dice. So students are going to have one tab open with the dice and one tab open with the jam board. Then students are going to take turns rolling the dice, multiplying those two numbers, and then placing their piece onto the board. And then the first player to get four in a row wins the game. I do like to have my students say the equation out loud to their partner, so if they roll a 3 and a 4, then they say 3 times 4 is 12, and then they drag their piece to that number. This is another super simple game, it's easy to make, and it helps your students practice those math facts in a really fun way. My students love this game, they can keep playing. I honestly just use the same template every single time because every time my students play, it's going to be different. Game number five is Hooray for Arrays. The goal of this game is for your students to cover up as much of a 100 grid as possible using arrays. So for this game, I place different numbers hidden under sticky notes. So player A is on the left, player B is on the right. Now they each have their own 100 grid. You could use the graph paper background for this game, but I wanted my students to have larger squares, so I just inserted my own background template that I made on Google Slides. So players take turns choosing two sticky notes to represent the dimensions of their array. Each sticky note can be played only one time. So I'm going to choose these two. I pulled a three and a six. So now I'm going to use the shape tool to draw an array with those dimensions. Then I need to multiply those two numbers and tell my partner, three times six is 18. Now I'm going to write the product on the array. Players are going to keep playing until each player has had three turns. That's why there are 12 sticky notes on each board. If the student pulls two numbers and make an array that does not fit on their 100 grid, then they do lose that turn. At the end, players add up all of their products. Whoever is closest to 100 wins the game and yells, Hooray! This game, of course, works great for those multiplication skills and finding area that we start practicing in third grade and up. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I wanted to make your life easier with a special surprise. So I'm sharing all of these games with you with the link down in the description box. So if you click it, it will give you the template to all of these games, the first five and the next two, and they are all ready for you to play with your students. So I really hope that helps you out. So let's get into game number six. Game number six is so I have learned anytime we can add a fun name to a game, my students get more excited to play, which means they'll be more engaged and they are actually doing more learning and practicing those skills, which in the end is all we could ask for. So I made this game entirely using Jamboard sticky notes and shape tools. So along the side are the sticky notes that are hidden and their numbers one through 10 all mixed up. So students take turns revealing one card at a time. Once they uncover the sticky note number, they have to decide if that will be the numerator or the denominator for their fraction. Students then flip the second card and place it in the remaining part of the fraction. The student with the larger fraction wins that round and places a point up in their score box. I just have my students collect all the cards into a discard pile. So this is the discard pile right down here. The player with the most points at the end of the game wins. This game is very similar to the classic card game War, so if students end up creating equivalent fractions during their battle, then they have to do another round, and whoever wins that round will end up getting two points in their score box. When students are making those fractions, they're going to most likely have those uncommon denominators. So if students think they won that round, the other player could say, I challenge you to a duel. And then their partner has to prove to them that they did in fact win that round by showing the equivalent fractions. That way students do need to practice making those equivalent fractions and comparing those numbers the right way. I love that in this game, students are practicing those uncommon denominators, comparing fractions, turning those improper fractions 
transitions into mixed numbers. When I taught this to my students, I first played it me versus the class. And so they took turns pulling the fractions for their team and they had a lot of fun with it. I really think the name fraction battle is what got them super interested because the next day they all came to class and one of them was like, are we going to have a fraction battle today? Which made me super happy that they enjoyed the game that much. And now they're playing in breakout rooms with their partners since they know how to play. If you do have your students reset the game boards, then I just tell them that one partner needs to close their eyes while the other partner is rearranging their sticky notes again and then their game board is all ready to go to play again. The last game is rounding goals. So students are going to be practicing their rounding. In this example, I'm having students round to the nearest 10, but this could definitely be adjusted to practice rounding whatever place value you're working on with your students. Students play on the same game board as their partner and whoever makes 10 goals wins the game. At the start of the game, each of the players is going to drag their transparent circle to whatever number they want down at the bottom. Then students are going to decide who goes first. That player now has to decide how to arrange those numbers. For example, if they decide to place it on a three and a seven, they can make 37 or 73. So if they choose 37, they will round that number up to 40 and place one of their playing pieces on that number. I like to tell them that these are like their little soccer balls. They're trying to score the soccer ball into the goal. Now after the first turn, the second player can only move their piece. So now they have to choose a new number. If that goal has already been made, then they lose that turn. Players continue taking turns until one player has made all 10 goals. So again, this is a great game to play, practicing those rounding skills. You can definitely adjust it to rounding to your hundreds or thousands, whatever place value you're working on. So some quick tips about playing these games with your students. Do make sure that you make a master copy of these games because as we know with Jamboard, things could easily get deleted completely. I love having these games ready to play. If my lesson ends early or I have some students that are done with their work early, they could easily just go into that breakout room and play with a partner. Also, when playing these games with my students, I just use the same Jamboard with the whole class. So if I am playing Fraction Battle, then I'm going to make a copy so that it's on eight different slides if I have eight breakout rooms then I usually just put a sticky note that says what breakout room that's for. So when students go out to play with their partners, they just have to go to that jam board and know exactly which one they're going to play on. It makes it really easy for me to see if there's a pair of students that maybe need help playing in the game, then I can easily jump into the jam board that they're playing and their breakout room and help them out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Remember to use the link down in the description box to get all of these games for free and ready to use with your students. If you did find this video helpful, please Please remember to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up and I will catch you next time. Bye everyone!